Fork in the Road with Chef Garrett is brought to you by Visit Knoxville. Surrounded by natural beauty and filled with over 600 restaurants from the bohemian to the upscale, Knoxville is a mix of small town charm and big city fun. To learn more about where to play, stay, dine, and all the events Knoxville has to offer, visit Knoxville.com. And by viewers like you, thank you. This week's adventure starts just west of the University of Tennessee here in Sequoia Hills. You know, I love finding out about chefs who are classically trained, who really know their stuff, but they dance to their own beat. Today, we're gonna meet one of those fellas. His name is Drew McDonald in the plaid apron. Hey, Drew. Chef Garrett. How Welcome you doing, buddy? Welcome to the plaid apron. Good to see you. Good to see you. Listen. You're making a big commotion around the restaurant scene here in Knoxville. Everybody's talking about this place that's doing what I like to call source cooking, which is from the source to the table with as few steps in between as possible. Seasonal, natural, tell me a little bit about it. That is, it's very relationship driven, very much a support group. Uh, as you said, it's definitely source. It's awesome to, when people ask me, where did this come from? Who's growing this? I can actually tell them. If you like what I'm serving you, feel free to go visit my farmer at the farmer's market sure. and get exactly what I'm serving you so sure. you can cook it at home. So it's, it's not just the produce from the farm, you also have a great source for fresh seafood. Absolutely, we use a company out of Brooklyn called Sea to Table and they've set the standard as far as eliminating that time and space between the water and the destination. That sounds great, so what are you gonna show me today? Today we're gonna be searing some scallops. Sounds fabulous, come show me. Sounds good. Great, okay, Drew. I know that one of the elements of this dish is an onion jam. I've got apple cider vinegar and some brown sugar. This right. is roughly a heavy quarter cup and right at a three quarters of a cup of vinegar. We're sure. just gonna get it started on the stove. Sure. A the heat. So that's your basic gastrique. Yes, definitely the basic gastrique. And the only other thing that we're gonna uh, put in there, a little bit of salt, a good couple pinches. Salt makes everybody happy and it just really pulls all the flavors together. Right. And lastly, I've got a fresh ground juniper berries, coriander, and black pepper uh, that right. were whole ground. And we're gonna put a couple pinches of this. We're probably looking for a solid half teaspoon. So I've already got a few onions cut, but we're gonna go on and dice this guy up into a very small right. dice. We're gonna start by just a little julienne, nice and uniform. And then we're just gonna basically transfer this. I'm gonna slide this this direction a little bit. Straight into the we're pot. We're gonna go straight into the pot. Yep. Just gonna put the onion in and let the reduction begin. And I've also got a little bit underneath here that we're gonna add to it. Great. And last thing is we're just gonna put a little cover on it because as the onions are gonna sweat out, that steam's gonna help cook them all the Absolutely. way through. So Great. next step in this is we're gonna, we're gonna get started on the vegetables. We've got two different types. We've just got a, a golden red, yeah. just a sweet red, and then we've got this uh, chagia or candy stripe. Yeah. But we're just gonna get those started uh, just a little bit of oil, don't need a whole lot. Salt and pepper. So it's just a straight roast with a little bit of salt and pepper. So we're just gonna pop these beets in the oven and get a good roast started on them. Sure. And they'll get beautiful and sweet in there. And now that we have the beets in there, the next step is we're gonna start our Jerusalem water chokes. Okay. Also, also known as sun chokes. Basically, I'll split this guy in half and just kinda cut little, uh, kinda thick juliennes and then we'll set them down flat in the pan. Medium Proper high. Proper heat going, yeah. yeah, medium to high heat. We're gonna just flip them, let them coat in that butter one more time, then we wanna distribute them back evenly so they're sitting flat. I've got another small little cast iron pan. They're cute. Got, <laughs> got to get these guys hot. Yeah, um, oh yeah. With as fresh as these scallops are, there's not a lot of water in them, but as soon as the heat hits them, they'll start sweating just a little bit. So you wanna be able to have enough heat that it evaporates that water coming sure. off of them yeah, yeah. and that natural caramel. You don't want to steam them, you want to sear them. No, absolutely. So what we've got are some of these fabulous scallops from Cape Cod, beautiful, beautiful. seasoned from sea to table. Uh, just hit them a little bit of salt. Crazy thing is about them, some people don't like over salt in their fish. You got to remember something comes from the ocean. So That's right. it, it kind of goes together quite nicely. 
All right, now that we've got the pan nice and hot, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of oil. There you go. The oil does a little dance in there to let you know it's hot enough. Indeed, now that it's, as he said, now that it's dancing, we're gonna stick the scallop straight on to get that nice sear going. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. You hear it when it hits. And let that sear just begin. Okay. So from here, we're gonna go to the oven. We've got a nice caramel Beautiful. started. We'll finish them in here so I don't have to flip them. Ooh, they smell good. Yes. At this stage of the game, we're not too far out. I'm gonna go in and pull the plate. Sure. For plating. The other components okay. of this dish, we've got uh, some ruby red or Texas red yep. grapefruit. We have some navel oranges. I love shellfish with citrus. Love Our it. Our onion jam. And then I've got a Mar lemon emulsion. Got a little, a little smear, as, as we say. We're gonna take this tayu, local tayu, and literally just enough to get it warm. So we're gonna hit it with a little salt and pepper. Remember with these sunchokes, kind of like a potato, you wanna over season them. We're just gonna okay. nonchalantly just kind of let the plate provide yes, the casual canvas. elegance. A absolutely, we'll let things fall where they should, where they want to. We're gonna go in and pull our scallops and flip them and just kind of let them rest. Of course. Should have a nice caramelization to them if you look. Still white, no color on top, but if you flip them, perfect. Man, I mean, there's nothing Ooh. nothing that makes me happier than this. Ooh, they are gorgeous. The beets are nice, Beautiful. nice and roasted. Good and dark. It will be quite tasty. Time for the scallops. Uh huh. Here we go. The main event. Some nice clean tongs. And I don't, sometimes I'll put them on paper to dry them off, but with these as fresh as they are, there's not a whole lot of liquid. So we're just gonna go straight to the plate. We've got our citrus mm -hmm. on the other. So we'll pull a couple of couple three segments. Don't need a lot. And last but not least, the thing that I think ties the whole dish together is that onion jam that we started. This is a batch Correct. that uh, has been finished. So we're literally just gonna take it and just drizzle it around. Well, I'll say that, it's it's sticky. That's why you have two utensils. Yep. It makes it a little easier. One to push. So we'll one to scoop and one to push. That is our locally sustainable well, scallops. Well, there you have it. Chef Drew and the plaid apron out here in Sequoia Hills. Well, from here, we're going to head into West Knoxville to the Bearden District, Holly's Eventful Dining. So saddle up and come on with me. Well, when you talk about catering in Knoxville, Tennessee, one of the names top of the list is always going to be Holly Hambright. I'm coming in here to meet her. She's a terrific person. She's a terrific chef. You're going to love meeting her. Come on. Holly, how are you, darling? Oh, gosh, you scared me. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Welcome. Good to see you. Well, you're going to tell me a little bit about the place and the menu and all that you do here. I hear nothing but great things about oh, that's you. Oh, sweet. Thanks. Well, we just uh, do, a, we get bored. And so we kind of like to do a lot of things. A lot of, a lot different, of different side of right. things. Yes. Yeah. So when you're back in there playing and you can, now you're the boss, your name is on the door. So you get to change your menu just as you please, whenever you want and all the rest of it, right? Well, so we you do a lot of different soups. You do a lot of different, you do a lot of different everything, don't you? Yeah, we do, we do. And yeah. I know for a fact that you've got a sort of a who's who's client list for your catering. That's sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's <laughs> true, you. and I know all about it. You get to travel the world when you go back into that kitchen. So you do stuff from everywhere. Exactly. So yeah. you're going to show me a dish from where today? Portugal. Portugal? Yeah, the Caldo Verde. It's, it's very well known there. Well, you gonna show me? Sure, let's go. Let's go Come look. On. Right, so the first step is the chorizo. Correct, and we're just gonna render the fat. Now that uh, is some beautiful looking chorizo. That, that looks like the real McCoy, Spanish. Spanish, so it's a lovely texture. It really is. And it doesn't fall apart, it keeps its shape in the soup, so. That's very intensely flavored, mm -hmm. it's a great it's sausage. Yeah. Okay, while well, that's rendering, what's step number two? We're going to peel our potato. Okay. So let's uh, look at the ingredients while we're at it. Okay. it, it there's not a lot of ingredients, no, but like you say, it's intensely flavored. The right. few ingredients add so much to it. So what do we have here? We got a potato. A nice russet potato. Uh, I have a diced yellow onion, uh, a shallot. I have uh, some plained uh, garlic. garlic. Mm -hmm. And then I have uh, kale, shredded kale. Beautiful. So very simple. Um, just gonna peel a potato. 
peeling the potato. Oh. This is a skill that's <laughs> yes. you know, hard to master. <laughs> yes, which all of us uh, longtime chefs started out doing. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> like I need to practice. Yes. Oh well. Anyway, so this is just a nice russet potato. Mm -hmm. uh, we like the starch content in this. Um, and the trick that I have learned is to shave it on a mandolin. Uh -huh. You can get it really thin and it will cook very quickly. So yeah, and it'll activate a lot of starch, so it'll do. give it a little bit of viscosity to the soup exactly. without so adding any sort of thickening. Exactly. So you can keep this gluten-free. Yeah. You know? No roux, no flour, none exactly. of that. Exactly. It's all natural. And that's important to us, so be really careful when you get to the end. So there you are. There's your little potato that's So there's peeled. the spuds, yes. Yeah. So now we've got to go back to the stove. Okay, so we got some hot olive oil here. Lovely. And um, in come the aromatics. Yep. Garlic last. In go the spuds. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And you um, just till it's coated in. Some of the olive oil. Yeah. There we go. And then we're going to add our, we have pork stock pork that we've made. Pork stock. Lovely. And now, if someone doesn't have pork stock knocking around like you do, they could uh, substitute probably a chicken stock. Oh, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to keep our, our soup without a, you know, layer of grease on exactly. the top. Exactly. So. Yeah. So that's why we're going to drain it out. But you can reserve the fat and use it for, as you say, your. <laughs> Spread it That's on your toast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'll just let it sit over there. Look at the color of that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I want to talk to you a wee bit about your family because your family is very well known in this town uh, in culinary circles. Also, your mom was a very renowned cook, she Hazel. Was, yes, she was great. And your sister, owns, Peg. Yes. Well, she owns Magpie. Correct. Which is a great little bakery. Yeah, she's awesome. So, and you offer a lot of their goods here too? We do. We have uh, Magpie's little cupcakes big cupcakes and slices of cake that um, she's been experimenting with. And then during the holiday, uh, people can pick their orders up sure, here as well. Sure, sure. So do you have these sisterly confrontations when you're in the kitchen together? Um, yeah. Well, we never work together. But never? No. Well, no. that's how you keep it, so that's <laughs> exactly. how you keep it sane. Exactly, exactly. All right, so what's next? Okay, so we're gonna add this uh, shredded kale in and we just let it cook, you know, five just minutes or so. Sure. Right, and a little bit, and then we stir that in and we're ready to go. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. So just let that go. In goes the kale. In goes the kale. That's going to cook down and shrink a whole lot. Mm -hmm. A little bit, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's also what makes it verde. That's the verde. <laughs> there you go. That's the green. Okay. And uh, and in we come with our chorizo. With our chorizo. Now, the um, you can always uh, um, also use, is it lingui linguica? Linguicha? Yes. And, uh, but there's only supposed to be one slice of the sausage in the bowl. I don't know really? what that's about, but yeah. we don't do that here. I think it has to do with poverty <laughs> in Portugal, be, yeah. not and, else, and I bet you. This looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. It looks really good. Great. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All Let's right. do that. There's more than one slice of sausage in there. <laughs> I don't spend a, a quarter pound of sausage in yeah, there. there you go. You'll just pardon me because I eat and talk at the same time. I love the bowl with the handle. Do you say I can hold it up like that? Exactly. Look at that. It's, I feel like Oliver Twist. Please, sir. Can I have some more? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, in Portugal, this would be essentially a peasant dish. But I'll tell you what, fit for a king. Absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Thank you. Absolutely gorgeous, Holly. Great. Well, I'll tell you what, we went from West Knoxville to Portugal with my buddy Holly. Awesome. It's a pleasure, darling. My buddy Holly. <laughs> well, that Holly is an absolute peach, isn't she? Well, there you go. Another gem right here in the Bearden District in Knoxville. I bet we can find a few more. Well, for my final stop in the Bearden District of Knoxville, I thought I'd check out rhubarb. Now, the chef owner here is Bruce Bogart. He's been at the forefront of the restaurant scene for the last 20 years in Knoxville. He's going to bring me into his kitchen. We're going to cook something up. Let's go. 
Okay, so I'm going to meet Chef Bruce, who is the chef patron here at Rhubarb, and I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you, darling. Oh, lovely. And there he is. Hello, Chef. How are you doing, yeah, Chef Bruce? Good, good to, to see, see you, buddy. How are you? Great. Well, that looks fantastic. Let's chat a little bit here about what it takes, because I think that people really don't understand what it takes for an independent restaurant to, to sustain itself. How much work it takes, how long the day is. So just talk to me about your day today. Um, it's a long day. It's a long um, day. A little restaurant, you have to do pretty much everything. So sure. uh, uh, we wear a lot of hats. I like to tell everyone I'm the dog and the pony. <laughs> so um, my day starts 8 o'clock in the morning when I come in and uh, do the orders and check things in and do paperwork sure. and check the numbers and all those things. And I have shop and make specials and make desserts and answer the phone and you know sure, that's before you ever cook yeah. anything so I, I work a full day from eight sure. to four and then from and then four on that's when the today, business comes today Saturday right. you start your day at the market right I, I do the farmers market on Saturdays so I come in at 4 30 in the morning I prep for three hours then I go downtown and I work the market from seven until three wow. then I come in and do dinner from three until ten wow then yeah, I sleep for two days that's what it takes that, and that, and that, that's, that's the glamour. <laughs> well, here's the good news. You go into the market this morning, this is what we end up with on the Most plate. Most definitely. This, Talk uh, me through it. You've picked a great day to come visit, actually. These are possibly two of my favorite ingredients. First, we have Gulf Red Snapper, yeah. uh, just amazing fish. And then um, we've had a little bit of a, of a chill in the air, and we've had the uh, local chanterelle mushrooms and lobster mushrooms. Uh, we have a forager who has found a big patch. Really? Uh, he won't tell us where, but that's all right as long as he keeps bringing them. So, so a beautiful golden chanterelle right yeah. here with the snapper. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, typically you have to, you know, you'd be in the Northwest or, uh, yeah. you know, and uh, you'd pay a premium. And they don't come cheap, but they're so amazing that it's worth whatever the cost. Well, and here's the beauty of the whole thing. It's only in a, in a restaurant like Chef Bruce's restaurant where you're going to find these kind of special ingredients that are foraged that day, that morning, that type of thing. You don't find these in chain restaurants, you don't find these in the formula restaurants, because, you know, it takes a skilled man to do them. And I'm about to find out just how well you did it right now. And so, just as a, to, you know, a little more of an ump is we have a little bit of an eggplant ragu down there, which is, uh, I try to make the circuit at the market each day and see sure. what's really interesting. And this gentleman had about six kinds of eggplant. So we got a little saute of uh, those different eggplant on the bottom, and we've made a lovely little uh, duck uh, demi-glaze. Really brings out the richness Beautiful. in the mushrooms. Oh, look at this. And uh, I'll even yeah, help you. you better help me out here, yeah. Those, Let's try those, it together, shall we? Those waffles from earlier have uh, <laughs> long got disappeared. <laughs> long worn off. Oh, this is beautiful. Let's check it out. Mmm. I'd actually pay for that. Oh, wow. You get that nutty earthiness of the chanterelle against the lush, rich texture of the fish. And the duck demi is a real big help. Really, really good, Bruce. Beautiful. Yeah, I never really realized the, uh, they tell you that the uh, chanterelles have a little bit of an apricot -y nuance, and I never really got that till you know, I got five pounds that were just picked, and you can put your head in, and that's all you get is this right, big apricot scent, nose. That aroma. It's beautiful. This is, a, this is a beautifully put together dish. I read something that you said in a magazine article where you used the phrase, I think you used the phrase, they had a, an intellectual palate or a mental palate, something like that. Yeah. And I thought to myself, that's exactly right, because it's really only people who are properly trained and grounded in this business it, whether you're born with it or you develop it good chefs all have it and it's the ability to understand what a combination of flavors will taste like before you ever assemble them onto the plate you already know that these things are all going to marry well and you have your odd hiccup 
but yeah, you know, but it's a combination of textures, colors, absolutely. what it looks like, what it, you know, the whole thing, and how they all and work together. Rather than just throwing the spice rack into the pan and throwing as many ingredients as you can and ending up with a hodgepodge of nonsense. And the hope is, is that it comes together quickly. Otherwise, the inspiration tends to go just yeah, as quickly. It so. evaporates. But yeah, when, like when you've got great, great ingredients, it's it's a whole lot easier to to come up with, you know, well, this that's kind a of fact. dish. This is really fabulous. Mm. Fabulous. You know, the freshness just screams at you. It's ex this is what great cooking really is all about. A few essential ingredients, very well prepared at their peak. It's beautifully done, Bruce. Thank An you. excellent job. An excellent job. And that's I'm why uh, that's why you've been the, the top dog chef in Knoxville now for quite a while, haven't you? Five years, but who's counting? Uh, apparently <laughs> you. <laughs> But good on you. Congratulations. That's what I keep my, calling my accountant in here. <laughs> that is a job well done. Awesome. That is absolutely fabulous. Brilliant. Great. Glad you enjoyed it. Well, old chef Bruce was in great form, wasn't he? Tell you what, he cooked us up a great little dish. Let's go back to my place and I'll cook you up a great little dish. Well, you know, chef Bruce at Rhubarb was kind enough to make those fabulous, that fabulous seafood dish for us. Now, he was using a sea bass. I'm going to show you something today and we're going to use a wonderful line caught fresh coho salmon from Alaska. Beautiful fish, a little more accessible, a little easier to find than a fresh sea bass and a little less expensive. I think you're going to love it and it goes particularly well with the chanterelle mushrooms that he used. So we're going to use that inspiration from the dish that he showed us and I'm going to show you something a wee bit different. First thing we're going to do is start our bacon rendering and in goes the bacon. A little bit of diced bacon there to render. As you can see what's happening is our bacon is starting to cook and crisp up. And you see all this lovely stuff here that's being left in the bottom of the pan right here. That's going to form the basis of our sauce. I've taken these potatoes and I've carved them out just with a, an ordinary melon baller and I poached them in water for a few minutes to get them almost cooked. Not quite, but almost cooked. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roast them on the back stove here in this wee bit of oil I have. So we're going to have a gorgeous brown finish and they'll go just like this. I'm just going to set my bacon aside for a minute. You see how beautiful and brown and crisp and gorgeous it is? And most importantly, look what's left in my pan. I'm going to use this fat right now to cook our mushrooms. See right here, there's our beautiful chanterelles, cleaned and ready, sliced, and they're gonna go right in there. What they're going to do now is they're going to absorb that bacon flavor as they saute down. In they go. On high heat, I'm going to go ahead and get this pan lovely and hot. And what we're going to do is, we have our salmon. We're going to hit it with a wee drop of olive oil, salt and pepper, and on she goes. So back onto the heat with our chanterelles. Now these are almost completely cooked right now. So now we're in the finishing process. I've got a little bit of finely diced onion or shallot right here. In they go on top. Remember Chef Bruce had that fabulous reduced duck demi glace. Well, we don't have that, and you don't have that at home. But you, what you do have is a wee bit of plain, ordinary, generic clam juice. Full of flavor. And that is going to lift all those little bits off the bottom are going to now become incorporated into our sauce. Right, we've reduced our sauce. It's almost to the full, fully reduced stage, so it's time for the next element, which is a wee bit of heavy cream. About four tablespoons is what we'll need, and what that's going to do, it's going to enrich our sauce, and it's going to pull it all together. This dish is coming together very nicely. All right, you can see our sauce just needs a tiny bit more thickening. And I also have a few strands here This is lemon thyme from the garden also. All my elements are done. Here's our sauce. Take it off the heat. 
Here's our fish, it's resting off the heat. And here's our beautiful potatoes, all golden and gorgeous. We're going to plate this thing now, and you'll see exactly what the finished product looks like. First, the sauce. And I like to spread it around the outside, along the bottom is fine, just like so. Make sure you get plenty of that bacon, as well as those fabulous chanterelles. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my salad, my beautiful spinach leaves, right in the center. Okay, we're going to pile them up. The potatoes, the outside of the dish. And now the piece de resistance, Mr. Salmon. And he sits right on top, just like so, just like so. I think Chef Bruce would be proud. So, bon appetit, enjoy. I'm Chef Garrett. We'll see you again at a fork in the road. A Fork in the Road with Chef Garrett is brought to you by Visit Knoxville. Surrounded by natural beauty and filled with over 600 restaurants from the bohemian to the upscale, Knoxville is a mix of small town charm and big city fun. To learn more about where to play, stay, dine, and all the events Knoxville has to offer, visit knoxville.com. And by viewers like you, thank you.